throughout history, the Virgin Mary has made great efforts to penetrate time and space and enter our world again to reach us, to communicate to us. That she would literally move the stars in the sky, the sun, and throw it at the earth like a big ball of fire. And the church has said, yeah, that really happened. Feel free to believe that. That's theologically correct. And there's 70,000 eyewitnesses. Our Lady at Fatima pierced heaven and earth and appeared to three children several times, six months in a row. And she told them very serious things. And she picked children on purpose to make the adults feel bad. She picked a seven-year-old little girl named Jacinta, a nine-year-old boy, Francisco, and a 10-year-old Lucia. I'm gonna give you the general message, and then I'm gonna give you three concrete things, my brothers and sisters, they work. Our Lady is so brilliant. It's not the same as reading sacred scripture, but you can read one verse of sacred scripture, and there's so much depth to it. You can peel it out, you can pull it, you can pray with it, you can meditate upon it. It's got so many layers. Our Lady of Fatima, oh my goodness. If you read the messages of Fatima, powerful. The Virgin Mary came to warn the children. She even took them to hell. She took the children on a field trip to hell. Are you kidding me? You cannot get away with that in catechism class. You can barely talk about hell, let alone take them on a field trip. And they say Jacinta did not sleep for three days. She literally could not sleep. And she said, I would have died of fear had Mary not promised that I was going to go to heaven. And that she would wake up in the middle of the night saying, penance, penance, we must do penance. We have to save souls. Our Lady was very serious. And in the rosary, she added a line. She said, Oh my Jesus, forgive us of our sins. Save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. She added that to the rosary because I think she knew that things are going to get so bad that we would be tempted to change our theology to match the way the world looks. So she did this right before things got really serious. But it's not a scary message. It sounds scary because, like, oh my gosh, this is not good. It's not good. But I'm smiling because her message works. So she came to give a lot of things, but I'm just going to share with you three. She told the children, do everything as a sacrifice. Do everything as a sacrifice. Everything you do, offer it to God as a sacrifice. Just say a simple prayer. Lord Jesus, I offer this to you as a sacrifice. This is brilliant. This, this sounds so simple. The message so simple, a child can do it. It's a message so simple, you can't make an excuse. Well, I'm working too much. There's no time for me to... Oh, okay. Your work is your sacrifice. It's theological gold. Gold. Why? If you were to say, Lord, what is your will? And if you're at work, Lord, the Lord's will for you is to do your work. You could do your work in your own name. You could. And you might get your work done. But if you say, Lord, I'm offering this to you. I'm going to let you live through me. That is, oh my goodness, that is theological genius. Oh my goodness. Let's say you flip burgers. By me saying, Lord, I surrender. I'm going to offer these burgers out of love for you. And I'm going to flip them as if I'm making your own hamburger. What's going to happen? Peace is going to flood my heart. Number one, I'm going to have peace of soul because I'm doing God's will. Number two, now I become insanely holy. St. Therese of the child Jesus, a doctor of the church, the little flower, is one of the greatest saints in the history of the Catholic Church. Second to St. Joseph and St. Jude, there's more statues of St. Therese. Everywhere I go, I see statues of St. Therese. What did she do? Nothing. She did little things with great love. And she allowed God to work through her. Our Lady's basically teaching these children the little way of St. Therese. Everything as a sacrifice. Then you have the power of God working through you. You do everything in the name of Mary. And everything you do is grace-filled. Nothing is wasted. So when you offer a sacrifice of the Mass for some intention, that's incredible. That's so good. That's the crucifixion of Jesus. But that lasts, you can only go max two Masses a day. You can't always be at Mass, but you're always working. You're always doing something. So number one, offer everything as a sacrifice. So powerful. Number two, Our Lady told the children, every time she appeared, 
pray the rosary every single day. So earlier I said, take what applies to you. I meant that like, are you going to do the seven sorrows rosary? Are you going to pray a, seven Hail Marys for your seven sorrows? But when the mother of God appears on earth and then everybody's approving this apparition and she says, pray the rosary every day and she keeps appearing and say, pray the rosary every day. And you've got Our Lady of Lourdes Chapel. Did you know Our Lady of Lourdes appeared 18 times with a rosary around her arm and she only appeared when St. Bernadette was praying the rosary and the apparition would only last the length of the rosary. And while St. Bernadette was praying the prayers of the rosary, the mother of God would move her fingers across the beads. She really likes the rosary. When she appeared, she said, at Fatima, she didn't say, I am Our Lady of Fatima. She said, I am Our Lady of the Rosary. That's a reference to something. That's a reference to the apparition to St. Dominic. When St. Dominic was begging God, give me a tool, give me a weapon to convert sinners, to bring down the mercy of God so that we can have miracles like the New Testament. After days of prayer, Mary appeared and said, Dominic, in this type of warfare, the battering ram is the angelic salutation. Why did she call it a battering ram? Because Jesus said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. How are you going to break down the gates of hell in your family? With the battering ram. Hail Mary, full of grace. 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 It sounds like you're doing nothing. But that's a sacrifice, man. To pray the rosary is a sacrifice. It can hurt sometimes. And it does great good. The Virgin Mary told Sister Lucia, promote the rosary. And Sister Lucia said, there is no problem, I tell you, no matter how hopeless it looks, that cannot be overcome by the power of the rosary. How many rosaries is it going to take? How many rosaries are you willing to pray? Change your life. This girl, I love you. This girl's like, four. I love this kid. I love this kid. When the Virgin Mary originally gave the rosary to St. Dominic, she said, preach my Psalter, which was a reference to the book of Psalms, 150 Hail Marys, meaning that the rosary originally was three five-decade rosaries broken up throughout the day. And she made crazy promises. But why would Our Lady of Fatima come and say, pray the rosary, pray the rosary, pray the rosary? So the Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary is October 7th. Do you know what it used to be called? It used to be called Our Lady of Victory. After the Battle of Lepanto, it was called Our Lady of Victory for hundreds of years. And then we changed it to Our Lady of the Rosary because the rosary is the secret to your victory. I know it's difficult, but if you pray it using the method of mental prayer, you're going to receive extraordinary favors. Our Lady chose this because anybody can do it. Not everybody can make it to daily Mass. Not everybody can make it to a holy hour, depending on where you live. But everybody can pray the rosary. Even if you've got a bunch of little children and you're breastfeeding and you're cooking on the stove, you can still say, Hail Mary, full of grace, Lord, the blessed of thy most holy, blessed is the Lord, the holy name of God, precious and there's none of the ever death. Amen. I know that that sounds like a bad rosary, but I have a friend who's very saintly and he says, The only bad rosary is the rosary you didn't pray. Because the rosary is so powerful, it course corrects. It course corrects. What do you mean? I say the mystery. I say the Our Fathers, I say the Ten Hail Marys. Because the words are sacred scripture, the Our Father, sacred scripture, the Hail Mary, sacred scripture, pray for me now and at the hour of our death. The Holy Spirit begins stirring up in me. Mary begins to pray for me. If I'm praying on 10x speed, I ain't going to be praying on 10x speed very long. I'm going to feel guilty by the second decade. And the Mother of God is going to say, are you serious right now? Are you serious right now? Hey, hey, like you're not a bingo caller. You're just not an auction. Slow down. So I tell people, yeah, pray it bad. Because by the end, you're going to pray it good. And Mary makes extraordinary promises to those who pray the rosary. So I gave you a picture of the mother of God holding her heart out and holding the rosary in one hand. On the back of it are 15 promises that Mary makes. I'll mention three of them. The number one promise that she gives is, I promise you signs. 
signal graces. You're praying for things. You're discerning. You're hearing the voice of God. When you pray this, ideas will come to you. I only trust ideas that I get before the Blessed Sacrament or when I'm praying this thing. I don't trust myself any other time. I'm like, well, it came to me during the rosary. I'll pray more about that. And then Our Lady will give you backup signs, confirmations. Don't forget these. There was a scripture reading recently that was about the Old Testament where God the Father was lamenting the Israelites and he said, did you forget the wonders that I did in Egypt? I led you out of the land of Egypt. I led you through the desert. Did you forget all that? Don't forget that. God has done powerful things in your lives. There's been times where he's shown you his hand so powerfully. Write those things down and don't forget them. A grace remembered is a grace renewed. You will get little confirmations of things that you've prayed about. The second promise that Mary makes, special protection. One of my good friends, I love him. He's over there in the corner. His name is John Paul II. He's a good friend because I talk to him every day. He's a very powerful friend. You should talk to him on a regular basis. The Lord is still doing mighty things in the church through his intercession. He's got power, folks. He was shot on May 13th, the feast of Our Lady of Fatima. Oh, coincidence, coincidence. No, he prayed the full rosary every day. That was the signal grace. That was a sign. The minute that he was shot was the exact minute that Mary appeared at May 13th. Coincidence, I think not, my brothers and sisters. That is the fruit of the rosary. He prayed the rosary. He recognized what day it was. He recognized what time it was. And he said, that's no coincidence. And the bullets, it was no farther from me from Ruby. I don't shoot guns on a regular basis. I'll be honest, I've only shot a gun like once or twice. And I was like, Ooh, how do I work this? <laughs> Sorry, I always wanted to be a comedian. <laughs> I wouldn't miss from this distance. The guy who shot him, Mehmet Ali Aja, was an expert marksman. The shots were perfect, straight for the vital organs. The Pope was fine. He had no death anxiety. It kicks in naturally, even if you're a pious person. When you're about to die, the body tries to survive and it causes anxiety. No death anxiety. Holy Father, how do you explain this? It's very simple. One finger pulled the trigger, another finger guided the bullets. And what did he do? He put the bullets in the crown of Our Lady of Fatima that's present in Portugal because he knew that Our Lady keeps her promises. Bad things will happen to you. Sometimes you might even feel like God sent them to you. Maybe he allowed them. But all things work for the good of those who love the Lord. And if you've prayed the rosary and you've called upon the name of Mary, I give you my word, the greatest good is going to come out of it. You just wait for the great good. And then you'll look back on your life and you'll say, thank God for that illness. Thank God for that heartache that I endured because I'm a better person because of it. And souls went to heaven because of it. People that I love went to heaven because of it. And it doesn't make sense to us in the moment because we're just overwhelmed with grief. But praying the rosary will change things. The third promise that the mother of God makes, I will destroy vice. What does she do? She crushes the head of the serpent. I will destroy vice. She will humiliate your enemies. One of my favorite stories from the Old Testament is about the Ark of the Covenant because Mary is the new Ark of the Covenant. She has the Word of God inside of her body. The Ark of the Old Covenant was made of the purest gold and it had the Ten Commandments, had the rod of Aaron, it had the manna that came out of the sky. Special things, but not God himself. And when they took that Ark into battle, they won their battles. When they took that Ark around Jericho, which represents a city of sin with big walls, those walls of sin came crumbling down. And my favorite story, it's kind of gross. The Philistines stole the Ark of the Covenant because the priests of the people of God were being unfaithful. Maybe we can relate, hopefully not. So God allowed them to suffer and the Ark of the Covenant was taken by the Philistines and put in a pagan temple next to false idols, which the Old Testament says that the gods of the pagans are demons. And so... After one night, the demon Dagon was crushed. They rebuilt it. Oh, maybe this is a coincidence. No coincidence, bro. It's the Ark of the Covenant, man. They rebuilt it, crushed again. The Philistines started freaking out. Oh, this is not a coincidence. Their God is more powerful than our God. 
So they took the Ark of the Covenant out. Those people who took the Ark of the Covenant, the scripture, this inspired word of God says, they died of hemorrhoids. You know hemorrhoids? To admit that you have hemorrhoids is embarrassing. I have to put the cream on my butt. It's very embarrassing. <laughs> but could you imagine the veins in your butt exploding out of your butt as the cause of death? That's utter humiliation. That's what the Virgin Mary does to the devil. That's what the Virgin Mary does to sin. Death by hemorrhoids to that sin. I will utterly humiliate it. I have seen this in so many people's lives. Hemorrhoids, oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I've seen this in so many people's lives who've been enslaved by sin. I have friends, I, I myself was a great slave to sin. And I was only free by the hands of the mother of God, by praying the most holy rosary. I have seen situations just recently on a regular basis, people who prayed the entire rosary. If you're a slave to sin, if you've got an addiction to pornography, alcoholism, whatever it is, I give you my word, you will be freed. You will not persist in your mortal sin and persist in the rosary. The two cannot coexist. The devil and the Virgin Mary do not share the same house. One of them's got to go. And if you persevere with Mary, I give you my word, you'll crush the head of the serpent. I've seen it time and time again. I've never seen it to fail. People say, I prayed the rosary, don't work. You only prayed a little part of it because people who pray the full rosary, they might not have money, but they don't have despair. And you're despairing. So I know you're not praying the full rosary. I give you my word. I just got an email from a man the other day. He came to me, he wanted to have a meeting. His poor wife was suffering with some sort of emotional problem. It sounded to me like a diabolical infestation because she had an allergy to things that were sacred. She was watching a lot of ghost movies. She had not been frequenting the sacraments. And the husband loved her. What do I do, Mr. Gabe? I pray, I sacrifice, I do everything. Are you willing to die for her? What do you mean? Are you willing to pray four rosaries? <laughs> oh. That's not so bad. Thought you meant like, <laughs> well, I have to give you the extreme. It's the art of the deal I hear. You, you say 10,000, you go down to 2,000. That's not sounds so bad. On the 50th day, he did a 54. I said, do a 54-day novena, four rosaries. On the 50th day, out of nowhere, she comes home. Where have you been? I went to confession. Oh, wow. Can I have one of those miraculous medals? Oh, wow. Hey, I heard there's this guy. He's doing 33-day consecration. Can we do that? And now she's praying four rosaries a day. Not a coincidence. For those of you who have children who've left the faith, signal graces are real. So there was this woman I gave a talk it was to the teenagers. And I didn't think the teenagers were listening, but I was pounding them. I was coming at them hard. But afterwards, I got an email from a woman, and the subject line read, unconventional testimony. And I was like, okay, let me read this. And then so I started reading it, and it was unconventional. She said, I had heard Father James Blount, I think is his name, from Salt, preaching, praying the full rosary, because it's so powerful. And then I thought, mm, maybe I'll pray that for my daughter, maybe, because her daughter was living in mortal sin. Her daughter had to have a bracelet on her ankle to monitor where she was, and she had been sneaking out of the house, doing drugs and alcohol and these kind of terrible things. So she wanted a solution. So then that night, this woman came to my talk to the teens and she said, that night I made a resolution. I'm gonna pray the full rosary, four rosaries a day for the rest of my life for the salvation of my daughter. She did it just a few days. She woke up in the middle of the night. She felt something was off. She goes to the daughter's room. The daughter's not there. She begins to pray the four rosaries. When she's finished praying, she hears a knock on the door. It was the police. You've got to come to the emergency room right now. Your daughter, she's not going to make it. So bad. Terrible thing. No parent wants to hear that. She got to the emergency room. The daughter died. She went home grieving, terrible grief, sobbing, as any mother rightly would. Starts praying the rosary. In the middle of her rosary, she said, I heard the most beautiful voice I've ever heard in my life say to me, your daughter's with us. She's been saved. God has been merciful. Your prayers have been answered. And the way she wrote that email, 
and the further communications we had were of a woman who had extraordinary peace. Extraordinary peace. She made a promise, I'm going to do this till the day I die. And she's going to keep that promise. We're all not maybe there yet, praying four rosaries a day, etc. Take what applies to you. Many of you here are very young. And you have children. I'm a youth minister. That's what I do. And it's bad. Things are bad out there. Very, very bad. I think we have one of the greatest programs in the entire city, entire state, entire United States, to be honest with you. If I'm honest, we have one of the greatest programs. But I would say seven out of ten of my students leave the faith. If I'm being honest. Seven out of ten. I have friends who went through Catholic school, K through 12, and they tell me maybe three out of 70 kids in their class kept the Catholic faith. The world is very attractive. There's so many distractions. There's so many drugs. There's so many stimulants. There's so much sex. There's so much everything that's available to steal the hearts of our children. And then they get into despair because they're in mortal sin. They don't have the assistance of the mother of God. Maybe they don't have anybody praying for them. That's why Our Lady of Fatima said, people go to hell because there's nobody to pray and do penance. But that means if we pray and do penance, we're going to win. And in every family that I have seen where the children pray the rosary with their family, every single one, they're very devoted. The only kids who make it, in my experience, unless it's a rare one-off, because I do have the rare one-off massive conversions, but usually it's the kids whose parents make them pray. I don't want to force my kids to pray. My kids should watch me praying and then say, hey, I want to pray. That looks like fun. That's garbage. That's garbage. I'll tell you right now, that does not work. It is the families that force their children to pray with them. Those kids keep the faith. I ask them, you're so good. When you walk into youth group, you walk with your chin up. And unlike this, like a zombie. Like you just got beaten. Do you pray at home? Yeah, we pray. What do you pray? We pray the rosary. Oh, wow. Your parents must be strong. Do you like it? Oh, no. It's miserable. <laughs> Sounds about right. I'll be the first one to say, the hardest rosary for me to pray is with my kids. I don't like it. I don't like it. At seven o'clock, and it's not them, it's me. At seven o'clock, I'm home, I'm chilling, I'm eating, I'm drinking. I don't want to say to myself, all right, everybody, stop what you're doing. We're going to pray the family. I don't want to. My wife doesn't want to. My kids don't want to. My son is a very devout young man. He doesn't want to. <laughs> My two-year-old definitely doesn't want to, but we do it. We do it. And it's a mess. It's a circus. I'll be honest with you. It's a disaster. If you're filming it, like if there was like a, like a security cam, what is happening right there? Why are they just torturing each other? I'm kneeling down. My son is kneeling down. My other daughter, I'm like, you're going to kneel during your decade. Everybody's at a different place in their life. And my two-year-old's trying to take everybody's rosary. It's like, let me take your rosary. I'm going to give it to this person. Now you're, and she knows. She's bad. She knows now I can't keep... Okay, 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 okay. And then when I'm done, she'll give it back to me. But around the third decade, something changes. The Holy Spirit settles in, and we look at each other, and we say, we're in the same room. Nobody's looking at a screen. Peace comes upon the family. This was good. And when we're done... It was good and it was worth it. Because what was I doing anyways? I was going like this. And that doesn't make me happy. And that doesn't bring me peace. Pray with your family. It's not going to be fun. It's going to be a death for 70% of the prayer. But the last 30% ain't bad, folks. And the idea that it's going to drive my children away from Catholicism is flat out wrong. Let's say the worst case scenario. The worst case scenario, 
You force your children, let's pretend it's not going to happen because Mary, you're saying, Mary, pray for me now and at the hour of my death. Pray for me now and at the hour of my death. Pray for me. Those prayers, if they say them, work. The ingredients are efficacious. You don't have to fear it not working. But let's say they left the church and they're about to die. And you convince them by peer pressure, 365 days a year, 50 times they said, pray for me now and at the hour of my death to the mother of God. And they did that for, let's say your kid lived with you until they were 22 from the age of seven, 15 years. That's thousands and thousands of Hail Marys that are going to come at their death. They might forget Mary, but Mary hasn't forgotten them. And that's why she made the Hail Mary to be so perfect. If you're going to pray multiple rosaries, I recommend a couple of tips. If you're going to pray one, you still need this. Make a plan. You can't say, I'm going to pray whenever I have time. You make time and you fit everything else around that. This isn't your burden to get done. This is your only secret to success. You want some normalcy. You want some peace. You want consistency. Make this a daily part of your life. If you're going to pray multiple a day, you only do the jump on prayers one time. Because I know it doesn't sound like much, but that Apostles' Creed will kill you. You will literally die if you pray that thing three or four times. Like seriously, I was like, I'm out. <laughs> so much so that when I promote the rosary, if I forget to say that part, I almost feel like I've wasted the entire talk. Because I just have never known anybody to persevere who had to pray the Apostles' Creed four times. It's a wonderful way to get the engine going. You got, you got to get on the track before you do the loops at NASCAR. I get it. But you only need to do it once. Have an intention. Who do you love? What do you love? I, I know you want to be virtuous. I should pray because I love God. Get out of here. When I'm tired, I don't care about anybody but myself. What selfish intention do you have that you will get out of bed, get on your knees or sit up straight to pray? You got to have an intention or you're not going to persevere in it. Who do you love? God allows certain, uh, certain agonies in our life because if he took them away, we would never pray. Have you thought about that? Maybe something you've been praying for for 20 years. You've been praying for this one thing and he hasn't given it to you because he knows that's what keeps you running towards him. That's where the great, you're like an engine of grace. So you say, I'm going to pray no matter what. I'll pray no matter what, Lord. So you can give this to me now. But make a plan when you're going to pray. Don't wait to the last minute bedtime to pray because then you're just going to fly through them. Don't lay down in bed trying to pray the rosary. I give you my word. Never was it known that anybody who laid down with the rosary did not fall asleep unaided. You will go to sleep. You might have insomnia. You stay up all night, all the other times. You start praying this. I give you my word. You are sleeping. The devil himself will give you sleeping pills. He's like, take these and go to bed right now. Don't pray. Don't pray. Come on. Trust me. Make a plan. I recommend praying on your knees in the morning when you're really tired or at night when you're really tired. A lot of people will tell me, especially men, I, I really have zero tolerance for weak men when it comes to praying the rosary. I don't have time to pray the rosary. I'm too busy. Don't you want me to spend time with my kids? I don't want to hear it, dude. I don't want to hear it. You wake up 30 minutes earlier. You stay up, pray the bed before bed. You pray the rosary in the car, going to work or coming home from work. You pray with your family. I have not impacted your family life. I've only impacted your radio listening habits. <laughs> Try this. The last thing that I have for you is very powerful. It's the unsung power of Fatima that nobody knows about. I call it the secret of Fatima. It's the secret. It's like nuclear power. You want nuclear power of saving souls? Everywhere you go, souls will be saved. Our Lady is a genius. The Virgin Mary appeared to Sister Lucia after Francisco and Jacinta died. She appeared to her in a convent and she had little Jesus with her. And she said, I have something for you. I want you on the first Saturday of the month for five consecutive months. So far, this is for everybody. I only want one Saturday, five times to go to confession, to receive Holy Communion in the state of grace, to pray one five-decade rosary, confession, Holy Communion in the state of grace, one rosary, and spend 15 minutes in mental prayer thinking about any aspect of the life of Christ with me. 
That's how you know Our Lady wants mental prayer. Because she said, spend 15 minutes meditating on the life of Christ as if I'm present with you. If you do that for the five first Saturdays consecutively, I will grant you the grace of final perseverance. You will have all the graces necessary for salvation. Let me make that clear. You will go to heaven if only on Saturday, one time a month, you would go to confession, receive Holy Communion, pray the rosary, and spend 15 minutes meditating upon the life of the Lord. But that's not the secret. That is a secret. If you're not doing that, I really encourage you. The easiest way to save your children is to get them to go to the five first Saturdays. The easiest way to guarantee your own salvation is do the five first Saturdays. It doesn't have to be organized. And the Virgin Mary made it so easy that you can go several days to confession before, if necessary. You can have forgotten your communion on Saturday and go on Monday. But she's just making it so easy. But I recommend you stick to Saturday because what happens is then you forget. For the purpose of making reparation to consoling her immaculate heart. This formula is the nuclear power. Do you understand how powerful this formula is? They, I only have to do something five times, and that's how much my soul is worth. My soul is worth five first Saturdays. What if you said, Blessed Mother, my soul cost five first Saturdays. What would you offer me if I gave you 5,000? 1,000 times more than what you asked for my own soul. What if I gave you five first Saturdays, but instead of first Saturday, I do it every single Saturday? This is why I say take what applies to you. You could do it every single Saturday. You don't have to do just once a month for five months. I'll do it every Saturday for the rest of my life. If I continued it for the rest of my life, could I have my husband? I know he's a scoundrel, but he's good. He's good. Just once a month for the rest of my life, I'll do this for my husband, please. What if I do it every Saturday for the rest of my life? What if, what if I do the five first Saturdays every single day of my life. What if you did it for 14 years? Every single day. You went to daily mass. Some of you can go to daily mass. Some of you already go to daily mass. You only need to pray one rosary, spend 15 minutes. I recommend spending 15 minutes in adoration because even if you just look at the face of Jesus, that's the institution of the Eucharist, you kind of fulfill her request. You're already at church and you pray one rosary, go to confession once a month, once every couple weeks, you're good. Every single day, you will be like a nuclear power of saving souls. Maybe you're retired. You have the time. So you have to ask Mary. Don't just say, well, Gabriel, sure. when he was like, only what applies to you, he sure did go all the way to the right. That guy was right. He wants me to go to daily mass, daily adoration, daily rosaries. And he's probably going to try to get me to do four rosaries because that's how he is. He's always trying to sell me something extra like a Honda dealer. <laughs> Some people call me the salesman of Catholicism. <laughs> They're not wrong. <laughs> what can I do to get you in four rosaries a day? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'll talk to my manager. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But seriously, we need to pray and ask Our Lady. You're here for a reason. You have the solutions. I firmly believe that there are some people here who are called to do the first Saturday every single day of your life. And if you do, that's thousand times more than what Our Lady asked. And even if you save everybody in your family, how about this? You just console the heart of your mother who's given you everything anyways. I'm saying going to Mass daily as if it's a bad thing. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? We get to go to Mass. If the priest was giving out $5,000 at every Mass, we would be lining up down the street. But he's giving out God himself, Jesus Christ. Every Holy Communion you receive is going to elevate your sanctity for all eternity. It's like mansion upon mansion, every Holy Communion you receive. It's the sacrifice of God. It's the, the peace that surpasses all understanding. You need to listen to what Our Lady's trying to tell you. Say yes to whatever Our Lady wants. She has a plan for you. And everybody's family and circumstance is different. How do you know if it's the mother of God? You feel it in your heart. You're not going to hear voices. You're not going to have revelations. You're going to have tuggings. I love you guys. If you need anything, feel free to talk to me outside afterwards. Special thanks to Luis for